All right. Well, <laughs> following Rose. I, I just changed the message I was going to share with you. <laughs> so if you uh, hear people talking about the first service, you say, wow, that doesn't sound at all like the one we got. It, it isn't. Yeah, I'm going to, I really am. I'm going to share a different message with you. Just, I just feel like, you know, the language of the, the spirit, you, you pay attention to that, you follow that, and as you do, you actually meet up with the Lord, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, there's absolutely no reason to miss him here. <laughs> Amen? Amen, yeah. Uh, you guys missed uh, the first services temperature. It was like uh, going to a hockey game in here. It was... <laughs> old, so thank you for warming it up. It feels, uh, it feels warmer. It's still cold. It's still cold. Nothing like first service. First service was Arctic. It was like, I don't know, north of here. Yeah. 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 Somewhere. Um, this is the first time back in a while. First time since you guys have been like the. <laughs> we call you the senior leaders, pastors, your highness. <laughs> what do we call you? What do we call you? What do you call her? Ma'am? Yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome. So it's, uh, it's great to be here. Um, I'm, I'm going to skip this. That's. I'm going to skip that. I'm just going to tell you about this just real quick. Um, the Life Academy is, you know, a lot of what Jen was talking about. It's, it's our relationship, family, leadership, culture, strength into any of those environments. And so if you're, if you're uh, interested in growing in your, the strength of your relationships, and by relationships I don't mean marriage necessarily, or dating, or that sort of thing, just your relationships. So if, how many of you have a relationship with another human? Okay, that's what I'm talking about right there. That kind of stuff, that, that connectedness right there, that's what we're after. We're after strengthening and, and making you successful in chasing fear away and bringing the kingdom, bringing love to your relationship, so that you're literally an ambassador of the kingdom. That's that's wherever you are. So if that's at home or at work or wherever you are, that's, that's what we're doing here. We're chasing fear away with the way we manage our own interaction with fear and love. And then in the family, obviously, I mean, we should, we should be the safest place to grow up as a child is in our home. And so one of our, our missions really is to uh, create a world where no child ever grows up afraid in their own home. Um, and then we have uh, business cultures. Which, how many of you are business leaders? And or you are uh, a leader in a business. <laughs> okay. Because different hands went up on that second one. I just want you to know. You're like, oh, that, that was me. I wasn't the first one, but I was definitely that second one. That's exactly what I was waiting for that. Um, you know, there is an honor, there is a practice of honor, a culture of honor that, that we get to lead in that is not going on in a lot of places. A lot of places are very much led by a spirit of fear. And so um, if you're at all interested in growing in these things, please check out the uh, LOP Life Academy. But if you're doing this sort of thing right here, which is uh, from a microphone, from the front, uh, you're, you're training, you're teaching, you're coaching, you are um, even preaching about it, relationships, family strength, leadership cultures. If that's what you're doing, I'm looking for you. I'm looking to partner with you. I, I, I look around at the, the voices that are, have been speaking to these issues through generations, and they're 70 and 80 years old now. And there's no successive momentum behind them to speak of. 
I don't think that's a great idea, and I am looking for ways to multiply myself as many times as I can before I get out of here. So this is where I meet you. This is where I learn about who you are. This is where we get to spend some time together. So if you're interested in either of those things, please check out the Loving on Purpose Life Academy. All right. What I want to talk to you about is the gift of discernment. And uh, as a, a, a gift, you know, I want us to realize that when you give somebody a gift, they're, they're happy to get it, right? They're, they're happy to receive that gift and, and or the operation of that gift. And for a lot of years, the, the prophetic, the gift of prophecy, the, when, when the prophetic gift showed up in a church, it was really to find the dirt in the gold mine. Hear ye, hear ye, verily, verily, I say unto you, whoa, whoa, you're in so much trouble. Whoa, here comes the Lord, and he is mad at somebody. Who is it? Who is it? You, you stand up. I dare you. I dare you to stand up and be shamed publicly. And that was called a gift. And so we presently have a gift of discernment, which is, ooh, 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 ooh. Did you feel that? Did you totally, I totally felt that. Can you totally feel that? Can you feel it? Can you feel that? Can you feel it? Ooh, 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 ooh. And I use my gift to discern what is evil about you. And then I tell as many other people as I can. Now, you notice the transformation of the prophetic. We went from looking for the dirt in the gold mine to actually looking for the gold in the gold mine. All of a sudden, we go to the mountain, we go, and we call out the gold in the mountain. It doesn't take a, a big talent to call out the dirt in the mountain. And likewise, when we use the gift of discernment, we have to understand, what is the assignment here? What is it that, that is, is leading us, is motivating us in the exercising of this gift? What is, it, what is it that I brought with me from heaven to earth that is a gift? What could it be? Well, I want, I want Paul to kind of introduce this to us. He's... Uh, He's writing the Corinthians a letter, and um, well, actually, this is the Philippians one. Um, he's writing the Philippians a, 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 a note, and, and he's, he's saying, Here, here are some things I want you to pay attention to in the, the, the exercising of discernment. I want you to actually, uh, I, want, I want to make sure that you are paying attention to how your love grows. I want your love to, to be on display. I want it to abound everywhere that, that this happens. I want your, your knowledge. I, I want excellence to be premier in, in the exercising of the practice of discernment. And so, you know, you can read it for yourself. But one of the things he points out here is, I want you to live without offense. I want you to live unoffendable. Is this working? <laughs> I want you to live unoffendable. Some people think being highly offendable is some sort of a sign of spiritual maturity. It's not. And it's not a gift of the Holy Spirit either. I am so offended. That was so offensive. I can't even believe how quickly I became offended. <laughs> that is not a sign of spiritual maturity. It's a sign of immature love. I mean, if anybody had a right to be offended, it was Jesus. If anybody was spiritually mature, if anybody was able to look down their nose at something, if anybody was 
able to be right all the dang time, it was Jesus. I mean, he was always right. How'd you like to have him as a friend? <laughs> well, hopefully you have him as a friend. <laughs> but he's right all the time. But he's not like that guy you know who's right all the time. <laughs> Why? Because he's mature in love. And love covers a multitude of of other people being wrong. Somehow we got to find a rhythm of interacting with people who are different than us. I mean, we just heard Rose up here telling us this. That somehow I have to find a way to open my heart and live in love with people who are wrong. To honor people who are different. To actually build community with people that don't remind you of yourself. Because we tend to surround ourselves with ourselves. Like, hell, oh, I, I, I don't know what it is I love about. I love it. I, you awesome. You, I love you. Can't come, come you, you remind me of somebody I love. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> me. <laughs> I love all the me in you. <laughs> it is so easy to be with you. <laughs> I mean, gosh, you're so smart. Witty. It's like it's like living in a hall of mirrors. Let's test it for just a minute, shall we? Let's think about somebody who won a national election that you did not vote for. Okay, just just think about. It. Okay, you got it? You got it? Okay. Now, when you hear that person's name, when you hear their voice or see their face, you think to yourself, there's so none of me in you. What would I honor? I only honor myself and other people. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. I'm going to say to this side over here now. We only honor ourselves and other people. And that is mere mortal behavior. That is mere human behavior. But you and I have been called to love, love, love people we know want to hurt us. What kind of love is that? That's Jesus' love right there. That's what he's talking about. He's saying, love your enemies. Honor all people. Not just the ones who remind you of you. You can't just surround yourself with yourself and then call it a church. This, this, this kingdom life, this kingdom culture, this bringing heaven to earth stuff changes earth. It just doesn't, it doesn't make it more polarized. It changes the experience that people have running into somebody like you. See, the, the whole world is surrounding itself with itself, affirming itself through those relationships, and then judging everybody else. The whole world is doing that. That's easy. 
It didn't take any special anointing to do that. It doesn't take any gift to do that. But it takes a tremendous anointing. It takes a tremendous love, a tremendous gift to violate that. To walk outside of that. To do what you just watched Rose tell you about? That's supernatural. That I forgive. That I love and I bless someone who stole from me. At that level. See, this is what Jesus said would make him famous on the earth. This is what will make me famous on the earth is the way that you love, the way that you love each other. Now, Paul writes to the Corinthians, and I think that when Paul wrote a letter to the Corinthians and they received it, smoke was coming out of it. They're like, oh, no, you opened this one. He has, he's, he's going to say something again. And sure enough, another letter shows up, and here he goes. He says, and I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as carnal, as babes in Christ. Not like, you know, running around in bikinis, but I mean like, like babies. <laughs> I could not talk to you as spiritual people, but as carnal I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there is envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? When there is envy, strife, and divisions among you, When you capitalize on differences, how you're not like me, I have no value for you. I have a collection of people who are like me, and these are mine, and I don't know what about you. Paul calls that carnal. The inability to live as spiritual people. We are a spiritual house, living stones, connected together. That's who we are. We are not Facebook. We are not social media. Or are we? Can the world tell us apart on social media? I don't know if you've ever been on a theological conversation on social media. (laughs) Or even where somebody used the wrong translation. Good Lord. (laughs) Carnal city. (laughs) We act like a bunch of crazy people. Why? Because immature love because we've given ourselves permission to dishonor people who don't remind us of ourselves. I gave myself permission to dishonor you because you're not like me. Where did you get that permission? I gave myself permission to not love you because you're not like me. And I'm I'm afraid you might not love me back. I only love people who love me. Where did you get permission to dishonor some people and not love some people? Who gave you permission to do that? Because you did not get permission from heaven. 
Jesus, the Father, Holy Spirit, did not give any of us permission to dishonor some and to hate some. Is this still working? These break down every once in a while. Paul is talking to the Corinthians and saying, hey, you, you can't divide up. As soon as you divide up, as soon as you create little groups, little categories amongst yourselves, you have become like this world, just mere mortals. He's talking about the gifts and how different they are and how random. I just, they seem just like, here you go. Here's prophecy and interpret, interpreting tongues. And here's, you know, wisdom and knowledge. And here you go. There you go. They're all different, but they're really one spirit. They're one spirit, but they're manifesting in all these different ways. That's the body of Christ coming to the earth. All these differences, one spirit. One. How many? One. One. How many categories here? One. One. He then goes on to say, remember Jeopardy? No, he didn't say that. (laughs) Alex, I'd like uh, Mediterranean barbecue recipes for a thousand. on way too long. <laughs> it, was, it was all about taking the most random things and turning it into all these categories. And then you can divide it into little boxes. And then you can give value to different boxes. And that's the game of Jeopardy. The game of Jeopardy is taking society and busting it down into little boxes and making it way more than one. How many different categories are there? Well, geez, it's just endless. There's just an endless number of categories that we have now become pretty proud of making. We're pretty dang proud of our categories. Well, I'm of this kind of category. (laughs) Wow, that's really unique. (laughs) That you must be special. I am, because I do this. Oh, whoa, that's totally different. That's completely the other direction. Yeah, here's the, here's the, the problem. Is it's, it's the Lord's goal. It's heaven's goal to be one. It is the enemy's goal to bust you into a thousand different categories and then turn you on each other. See, the, the Greek word... For the word, the name accuser is the word categoros. Where we get our English word categories. And so when the accuser is orchestrating the assembly of how we exchange information and perceptions and make judgments in the church. I'm not even talking about social media yet. I'm just talking about in the church where I give myself permission to dishonor some people. You did not get permission from heaven to do that. I give myself permission to withhold love from some people. Where did you get permission to do that? Because it didn't come from heaven. But Rose stood up here and showed you She stood up here and showed you one spirit. We are one spirit. No matter what you decide to do, we are one spirit because of what he decided to do. That's what changes us. That's what makes us who we are. Paul has this incredible challenge. His challenge is to deal with the reality that he is introducing people who can know God to the Jewish people 
who believe that there's only one group of people who God talks to. The one group of people that God deals with. Only one group of people that God values. And that is us who have been circumcised. And Paul say, no, 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 Here's come, here comes some more. They're coming from all over. All you have to do is believe in Christ. That's all you need. And they're like, no way. He says, yeah, that's all it takes. This is ridiculous. You mean I got circumcised for nothing? <laughs> yes, it's absolutely worthless. Oh, heck no. Oh, heck no. And so here's the, here is Paul's impossible situation is that somehow the Jews and the Gentiles become one. Well, now it's been a while since anybody checked whether I was circumcised or not while I was preaching. Because <laughs> nobody really cares. We, we don't even understand that. There's no longer a Jew, nor Greek, nor Jew. What? Who cares about that one? What is that? Where did that come? It must be some mistake. Really? People cared about that? Yeah, that's the mountain that Paul died on. That's the mountain that Paul died on. He gave his life to win that one. And then we go on. And there's ne neither slave nor free. Now, this is, he's talking to an economy that is dependent on slavery, and nobody's ever known anything else, ever in the history of man. And he's saying there's neither slave nor free. And we won that one. We're, we're standing, now nobody in here is wishing for slavery to come back. We won that one. Then he goes on to say there's neither male nor female. Okay, now we got a war again. Okay, now we got a struggle here. Maybe not here. But in general, we still have a, who's, who's your covering? Who's, who's the roof on your life? We still got all that craziness going on. Where's the circumcised male that you're connected to? The wife over here just outed her husband. Here's what Paul's saying. Now, this is where, you know, if somebody starts choking on this meat, just punch him in the chest, give him a Heimlich, okay? <laughs> Here's what Paul's saying. And this is so hard for us to hear today. He's saying, there's no race. There's no class. There's no gender. We are all, how many? One. One. We are all one. See, the devil is trying to scramble us into a bunch of small categories, so we have to politic to protect ourselves. And heaven is trying to move us all back to one. Yeah. Back to one. And we have to be able to discern this. We have to be able to discern what is happening while we stand in a, in a, a culture that is at war, not just with each other, but in a war with heaven. Am I cultivating an affection for people or a distance with people? Do I, do I even know what's going on in my own heart when I interact with other people? Or have I, or have I discerned something?
is, is my discernment working so that I can justify turning my love off? See, my discernment is not so I can tell what's wrong with you. The gift of discernment starts with what spirit is motivating me. What spirit is motivating me right now? Is it love or is it fear? See, this is a gift. Remember when Jesus is coming back, I think it's to, to, to Jerusalem, some city. They're coming back, and uh, James and John discover that, hey, you're not happy that Jesus is back. Where's the party? Where's the celebration? What's going on? How dare you diss our Jesus? You dissing our Jesus? Okay, okay, great, great. Jesus, why don't you just hang out right there? You know what we're going to do? We're going to call fire down on this city, and we're going to blow them up. That'll get a little fear of the Lord back in this. <laughs> and then people will know the love of God. <laughs> do, you, do you see how confusing this stuff gets? We're doing this to ourselves. And, and Jesus looks at these two guys and he says, what? You're going to blow up a city in my name. You don't know the spirit that you are of. You don't know what spirit is, is motivating you right now. What, where would you ever get permission to blow up somebody who was disrespectful to you? Mamma mia, he says. No. What is the spirit that I am of? What is it? Because there's really two choices. There's two choices. This is why we live in a culture, we live in a society that is at war with Christ. They would like to say we're at war with each other. No, 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 no. The Antichrist spirit anointing is the power, the prince of the power of the air. It is literally at work to scare everyone of everyone. And the spirit of Christ has come to chase that spirit out. There's two in this war, not 10,000. There's two. There is Christ, the anointed one. Some people think that Christ is Jesus' last name. No, it's... Jesus, the anointed one, Jesus, the Christ, and then there is the anti-anointed one, the one who is against the Christ. There's two teams. There's just two teams. That's all. There's two teams. One wants to divide us up and destroy us, and the other one wants us to come together and be one. And so... In that, we're, 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 we're inviting heaven to come. We're inviting heaven to, to have his way, have its way through our lives. And, and I got to be looking for what joins me instead of what divides me. And so the discernment, the gift of discernment is looking for what, what gathers us to be one, Jesus prays, Father, I pray that they would be one as you and I are one. This is, this is the agenda of heaven. 
We're, we're not going to agree. We're not going to agree with each other. We're just not going to agree with each other, okay? We're not. And we can love each other like crazy. We can love each other like crazy and not agree. But only if there's a covenant holding us together. Only if there's a covenant making two one. We're not going to agree. How many of you are married? I rest my case. You're not going to agree unless you married yourself, which, which is the big shock. It's a huge shock. I can't believe you're not me. Oh, where did you come from? Yeah, we disagree. We see it differently. We experience it differently. doesn't make one of us evil. Well, it does, but then you get over that. We act like it does. How could you think that? How could you? How could you? How, I can't believe. How, why aren't you me? <laughs> this would be so much easier if you were just me. Well, you're not me. I'm not you. We're not each other. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm going to skip that part. <laughs> it's a... It's, uh, it's, it's really good. That was Bill waving. <laughs> Discernment helps me understand the spirit that I am of. What is influencing me? What is motivating me? What is, what is driving the values of what I perceive. Am I, am, I, am I driving to appreciate and to have affection for? Or have I judged and is my goal become distance? I mean, that works in a marriage and it works in any other relationship. That's why it's a gift. Do you know the spirit that you're of? Are you, are you flowing from the spirit of love are you flowing in the spirit of fear? We have to decide that. And, and the Holy Spirit is the great gift giver. James goes on to talk about, you know, how are we considering that things are, are wise that we're doing? Because when we have envy and strife and division, when we have bitter envy, self-seeking, when, when that, 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 that wisdom is demonic. That wisdom is demonic. When I am operating in a way that justifies judging you, separating myself from you, that is demonic. He goes on to say that that the wisdom from heaven has the fruit of peace all over it. And that's what we're cultivating. That's, that's what we're discerning for. That the excellence of the relationships that the kingdom creates in us are wracked with peace. Where we find envy and strife and divisions among you, are you not acting carnal? Are you not just acting like mere men? Ladies, you get in on that too. Who will be called the sons and daughters of God? Those who sow and cultivate peace. The shalom of heaven, the one that, that actually makes things whole, that brings things back to one. That's who we are. That's what we're doing. That's the adjustment that happens in my heart. That's the adjustment that happens every time I open this Pandora. Every time I open this thing, what spirit am I operating in right now? Amen? Amen. Let's all stand together.
I'm just going to have you put your hand on your heart. Say a quick prayer. Holy Spirit, I pray for a fresh release of the gift of discernment in this room. Lord, that we would be famous for our love one to another. That as we, as we go out of this place, Holy Spirit, I pray that you begin to help us see the Spirit of God at work and open our eyes to even what resistance to your Spirit would be in the room. But we ask for heaven's strategies. We want to see what our daddy is doing in every circumstance, in every situation. Lord, we break our love affair with fear right now in the name of Jesus. We reject you. You are not my counselor. You are not my counselor. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and tune our heart and our ear to your voice that we would be giving you glory with our lives.